Hi everyone, it's Wendy. Welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm here today to um, just get started on doing something for our art journals. Uh, so we're going to do a little bit of watercolor painting today. Uh, and I'm going to use this little urban uh, Robin, Robin, Roman Schmalls uh, watercolor kit. That I think we, we did the swatching together in a video a while ago. So to get that prepped before we get started, I'm just going to give it a little dose of water just to activate the paint a little bit. They don't need a lot of activation. The Roman Schmalls paints are very, very, very uh, juicy. So um, I'm using this as my for my art journal. Um, I've shown you this journal before, and it's my personal journal, and I've done a few things in here. I have my little Arthur tuck spot and whatnot. I don't have any uh, paper that is specifically art paper in it. But we will be doing some things as we go along directly on these pages so that I can show you how you can do things on pages that are indeed um, not art pages. So just wanted to let you know that's what I'm going to be using. Uh, and today we're going to be doing just some free painting and then a little bit of ink over top on uh, watercolor paper. And then I'm going to cut it up and maybe make some tags or you could use it for bookmarks or whatever. And while that's drying, then I'm just gonna do some swatching on some um, very old paper that we can use in our journals as well. So I'm gonna set this to the side for now. So in terms of supplies, um, I like to have, for this, I'm gonna use the watercolors. I just wanna make sure you can see everything there yep okay so if i keep this around here we should be good great uh, probably won't need that water again but we'll see i have a little water a cup of water that i need just one second i left it behind i'll just go and grab it As Gail would say, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> I hope you can hear me okay. I have, uh, I'm wearing a mic. I've got a wireless mic and hopefully that will help us. So this is our water. I've just got it in my little cute little fish pottery piece, which I think is adorable. So I'm gonna set that there. Hopefully you can see. Okay, we're good, terrific. So in terms of supplies, I have a piece of watercolor paper. I have these clipboards that I like to use for uh, my bases when I'm doing a piece. I often will take uh, washi tape or painter's masking tape and I'll tape it down. Um, if I'm using washi, I actually will take it and go like this, usually on my pants, on my thigh, just to make sure it's not too sticky. And then I will go all around the surface to keep it kind of straight. So I'm just going to do that first. Let me just put some of this on my on my thigh just to make sure it's not too sticky. Now there's two sides to um, watercolor paper. There's usually one side that's coarser than the other. This is cold pressed um, water paper, watercolor paper. And so I do find, I tend to use cold press more for watercolor because I do like that little bit of texture and it, it just gives a little bit more texture to your painting. And I'm just gonna grab another piece. We'll just do the sides a bit. You don't have to do this step. I just um, find that because I'm going to put, I'm going to dampen the whole back of this piece because we're going to do something that's more um, kind of impressionistic, ethereal, that sort of thing, then um, it's a very loose style that we're going to be playing with today. So now some people, um, and I've done this before, 
we'll use a, we'll water the back of, this, of the piece, set it down, and that will help it lay flat. Um, but uh, for this particular purpose, I'm just going to go this, this route. And then in terms of brushes, um, I like to use for my painting, uh, for the images, I particularly like to use round brushes. Uh, these are all fairly pricey brushes, but that's because I do fairly fine work uh, and I need my brush to be really reliable. Silver Black Velvet is one of my very favorite kind to use. And then Princeton um, Aqua, Aqua Elite. Uh, and these you can get on Amazon and sometimes like on Black Friday one night, you get really good deals. But I can tell you, use any brush that you have. You do not need anything as fancy as this. I need them because I do um, fairly detailed work. I don't know if you'll be able to see. So this is a piece that I did of my one of my granddaughters. Uh, and one of the things people say about watercolor is try and use the largest brush that you can to get the detail that you want. Uh, and so for that one, I used a, um, this is a 12. I used a 16 for the whole thing, even the eyes. So it's even thicker than that. So it, it is, if you have a good quality brush, you'll be able to get the detail with watercolor if you're doing something that you need to find detail on, as long as it comes to a really nice point. And you can see when that's dipped in water, it comes to a really, really nice point. So I have those um, that I typically use for, certainly for portraiture and for florals. And then I have a few flats here. These are really affordable. This is Royal, Lang Nicole, and this is actually from Michaels. And I think I always get my brushes at Michaels. Uh, this one is Windsor and Newton Cotman. When I get my brushes at Michaels, I always look for a sale, and sometimes you can get like two for one and whatnot. So this probably was like a seven or eight dollar brush, and this might have been a five or six dollar brush. And I use them this flat I particularly like for swatching, so we can that's why I have those out specifically is to do some swatching. Okay, enough on the theory. <laughs> I have this wider brush. It's one and a half inch. Uh, and because I'm going to put water all over the background, this is a Mottler brush by Princeton at Aqua Elite. It was part of a Christmas gift I think I shared with you. So this was one of the brushes that came with it as well. And I think, yeah, I haven't used this one yet. This is a uh, an eight round. It's gorgeous. And this is a beautiful cat's tongue oval wash, three quarters that also came. And that was a really lovely, lovely kit. The cat's tongue is great for doing leaves and petals. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a thin layer of water down like that. And trying to make sure that I have it over the entire surface. Double check and see if I look into the light. Do I have it everywhere? I have it everywhere. Perfect. That's what I want. Okay. I also have a cloth. Instead of using paper towel, I like to be more sustainable. And I use like these. This is like a dollar store tea towel. And it's it's really lovely and fleecy and durable. And I just use those until it gets all filled with paint. You can see it's been used before. And then I wash them separately. From my laundry. So I keep this generally just right here. Um, double checking to see if you can see so that I can just dab off if, as I need to. So this is inspired, what I'm doing today is entirely inspired by um, her name is uh, Creations CC uh, and I'll put the link below and it's Creations C-E-E-C-E-E -C -E -E -E, and she is just absolutely fantastic. Um, she is uh, on YouTube. She does absolutely beautiful, um, absolutely beautiful uh, videos, meditative, watercolor, 
uh, et cetera. And you see how that's blooming? It's just beautiful on there. So I'm just gonna, gonna try and create like a field of flowers. So I know I saw a video that Cece did years ago <laughs> um, that has inspired this. Uh, those seem a little too regular, don't they? Pardon me. I mean, they're so close together. We could mix a little, um, a little bit of red here, mix with some yellow. Don't worry about getting another color in your paint. You can dab it off later if you want to. So I'm just gonna, just doing a little, like I'm not even trying to make a petal. I'm just giving a feel. And if there's, if you're feeling like it's not wet, watering, like it's not moving much, you can give it a little tiny squirt of water to see if it'll move some more. And then, like I said, we'll do some, we'll do some play. And there's no worries if they merge together or whatever. It's all good. So I'm going to grab some more of that beautiful fuchsia or uh, magenta. That paint, that paper is drying very fast. And I, I can't remember. I probably have not... I don't know if CC did a background first or not, but this will this will definitely give you a result. So we'll we'll stick with what we have. See how it's bowing up like that because it's wet. So yeah, how's everybody? I hope you're well. Um, we're doing good. I'm doing well with my physiotherapy still dealing with, you know, back, dis back pain, etc. So it will, uh, it'll get better. So I'm not, I'm not worried. I have a great physiotherapist. And so that will make a huge difference. I mean, this doesn't look like much right now, does it? But it's super fun to do. <clears throat> Another person I would recommend uh, for you to look at, and I'll put her links below, is Michelle from um, The Creative Cove. Oh, she does some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful things. So, yeah, I feel like Cece might have done, like, more um, interpretive, like that she might have done a full background first. I don't know. I'm going to put more water on this and just let it move a little bit. And you can, if you're, if you're brave, you can pick it up and you can let it move. See if it'll move a little this way and that way. I can, I definitely get the feeling of flowers there. Um, and we're gonna get probably more sense of that. As we go, there's another green here. This is that gorgeous Aquarius green, which is super pretty. Just gonna throw some of that in there. Cece will do have done a better job than this for sure. But um, it's just kind of fun to just see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna stop because I may end up overworking it. I think it's kind of pretty as it is. Okay, and we're gonna let that dry. Now I could use a, um, I'm hoping it's gonna dry fairly quickly. I could use a um, uh, heat gun if I wanted to, but I don't want to, um, I don't want to over, uh, I don't want to move the paint any more than it already has been moved, and a heat gun will move things along. So these are just some very old papers that I have that I just thought we'd do some swatching on, and this is the sort of thing that looks fantastic in a journal uh, as well. So I'm just going to 
clean my brush a bit. Dab it off here. And I'll wash it up properly later. I'm going to use this flat brush. It says it's a 20. I use flat brushes more for um, acrylic work. So I'm just going to get some water. Put it fairly light. And I'm just going to go... Well, that's quite light. I can put a little more paint in it. And with, if you use a flat brush, then if you're looking for a square swatch, you may not be. This is a great way to get one. So I'm just going to do a whole page of each color because I know I will use these. I tend to tear them apart rather than cut them apart because it just gives it a little bit more rustic look and it's great for journals. Um, and that's what's love, one of the lovely things about Michelle uh, from the Creative Cove is that she she does a lot of applications that um, fit in journal making. So um, that's really good to have. So just as simple as that, if you wanted to do a swatch, move that out of the way. Just keeping my eye on that painting. Um, let's get some of this pretty yellow. Put some yellow on here. And um, you'll see how I use these swatches in a future video. I mean, if you want to see how to use swatches nicely, you can look at... Um, Rachel at Roxy Creation, she does beautiful work and she's used swatches in a lot of her her work. Um, and Leslie from 507 Willow House Journals, she also uses them a lot. So it goes so fast when you have a nice flat brush like that. Okay, now I've got to move these. This is my challenge is I'm going to run out of space. Mm -hmm. And move this one as well. Let's grab a couple more. Page. Now we'll do these two pages first. So I have a magenta, which we used for the flowers, um, but I think I want to mix it a little bit. I use some of this buff titanium and it's going to give us more of a true pink. So a little more of this, a little more of that. Grab some more buff titanium. There, that's a really pretty pink. So just like that. If you wanted a bigger swatch, you could just make bigger squares. It's totally up to you, whatever you want to do. It's very, I have to say, it's very therapeutic to paint these. Um, if you hear noise, that's Arthur and Midgey playing upstairs. I closed the door to the studio because I didn't want... Um, Arthur down here were on the table while I was painting. Um, and I'm sure you can understand why. <laughs> yeah. It would get a little sketchy. Oh, well, maybe we'll use some of this beautiful ochre. Gold ochre. Well, this would be great for metallic paints, too. I do have some metallic paints. So... So yeah, you don't need anything fancy. Um, like I said, because I do um, portrait work, uh, I tend to um, require a little bit more reliable brush. And you know what? If I could get a brush that costs less, that was as good, 
then I would do it. It doesn't, for me, it's not about the brand name. It's about the reliability. So um, I accept any and all recommendations you might have in that area. So I'm going to do these. So I'm just going to scoot my chair a little bit. There we go. Grab a couple more pages. That's pretty, isn't it? those there. I'll just do some more. Save these little bits. Okay. What other color would we like? We have a really, really dark aquamarine. I feel like that might be too dark. So I'm going to do the same thing as before. We take this like it's a ultra, it's an ultra vi ultramarine, not aquamarine. Ultramarine. And I'm just going to mix it with my buff titanium just to get a little bit of a lighter blue. It's more of a kind of like a heritage blue, isn't it? When you mix those together, it's very, very pretty. So, and it's more, I find the buff titanium, it's like adding white. It makes what you're doing a little bit more. Um, opaque, almost like a gouache consistency. Not quite gouache, but similar. So let's just grab some more of that buff titanium. And I'm not worried if this is a little bit of a different shade in my mix, because I'll just, I just use pieces of this as I go. I don't use I generally don't use a whole page of this at a time, of the swatches. MacArthur's not happy. So, just looking at where I can put this. <laughs> I have so loose space, I can't put it there. Okay, I'm just going to set it down on the floor. And I want to do a red, I think. If you want to clean your brush, I just go like so, but we're, we're not being too fussy at this stage. Ooh, that's a lovely red, isn't it? There's a bit of a sizing on this paper, so I'm not going to put anything over that pretty L. But apparently I'm going to make a rectangle there rather than a square. And that's cool too. Wouldn't that be pretty color in a Christmas journal if you wanted to put a little swatch? So the thing with watercolors um, is that they do dry lighter than what you're seeing here. So this won't be as intense a color as you're seeing right now. Okay, set that down on the floor as well. Now, um, let me see, grab another. Oh, I have some of this beautiful, um, that is rag paper. Okay, so why don't we, I'm gonna just take that out and clean it off. Like I say, I'll wash them completely later. Why don't we do some leaves and that sort of thing? Do some little patterns, if you will. I put it up here with a little bit of water if I want it thin it out um, more than I'm getting from just putting, getting it from the pan. So I'm just going to go like that. Actually, I find if I take my brush, squish it down. You're going to get a leaf shape like that. Probably don't have as much paint in it as I would like. So. 
Just push it down like that. So the rag paper takes on quite a bit of water. Like you can see it gets wet there, but that will, it should dry fairly well. And let's see. And I'm just gonna do it again. Now, you need to know I am not holding myself out as an expert on uh, watercolor or any other medium. I am pretty much self-taught in those mediums. So, um, but I've read a lot and I've watched um, a lot of folks. So please, and I say that with great humility, I am definitely not an expert. So if you wanted these to be considerably smaller and you wanted to use this technique, just use a smaller uh, brush. This is a, I think it's a 12, yeah. So yeah, so you can get the idea. It's not, it's really not hard to do. It's times like this I wish I knew how to do video editing because then I could have <laughs> edi edited the uh, video so that we weren't, you know, just waiting around for <clears throat> the uh, the piece that we started to dry. So, so I'm just actually I'm just having fun to be honest with you at this stage. And this this particular plant may or may not or leaf exist in nature. I'm not worried about that. And see how I'm just moving the page around as I go. Oh. And I don't mind if I go over the other because that's how plants work. And put our leaf there. I get kind of quiet as I go. It's very peaceful work, or it's not work. It's just very peaceful activity. And I think I'll put one just in there like that. Um, this will be really fun to use somehow and like well you know we could tear it apart use it however we like in our journal so i think that's really fun this one is has got more water in the brush here look at that i goofed it's all right we made a double leaf there are no goofs in nature that's for sure So I'll just keep on going. So I don't have any new uh, stories. Or usually I have some after the weekend. We uh, we didn't have the kids this weekend. We had for supper. We had um, um, they had activities that uh, they were enjoying um, out and about. So I got a bit of a break <laughs> from cooking, and I got to tell you. It's not just the cooking. It's, boy, it's expensive. I know I don't have to tell any of you the cost of food is just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, so, yeah. Just looking at a few spots where I might want to stick a leaf or two. Yeah, I love this one. I think that looks really, really good. So that has got to dry. All right. 
setting that on the floor and hoping I don't step in it. Let me see, how is our, how's our piece coming? Oh, it's almost there. You know what I might do, just so that we get moving along. But you can see how mottled it is. I'm just gonna take my cloth and go like that, just to take up some of the, I'm not looking to move the paint, I'm just looking to take up some of the little blobs of paint so that it's a little bit drier. It's actually pretty cute, I think. You, I hope you can see a garden as we go. It's very, very simple. All right, let's just give it a, a couple more minutes. Let's do one more sheet and then uh, and then we'll start working on that. So, what else might we want to do? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, we could do, oops, I've seen Rachel do this, so what color do I want to use? I'm going to use, I think, the blue. Um, just to do some some mark making. Which is doing this sort of thing. He hears me, Arthur, and so he wants to come down and check it out. You know, who's she talking to? And you don't have to go in the same spot as before. But just doing some mark making and that might be kind of fun um, that we could tear these off and put them on journal in journals somehow did I say that Michelle from the Credit Cove has a really good like she does journaling a related art as well um, and I'm just such a, a fan of what she does so um, like I said check out and go subscribe. She has a, a, a lovely following already, but she can always use more. And there's so much you could learn um, from her uh, that I think it's definitely worth going and, and checking her out. I'm just gonna turn this around. I can use a different color this time. Let's go for this yellow ochre and just put this down so I'm not just killing time I'm doing something that's going to be used in some way in our journals so I feel good about doing it and I hope I'm fully on screen nice that I have a, I can film a little bit longer with this new format um, and yeah please tell me if the sound is okay because I can adjust my mic um, so a few of you had said it was hard to hear or you had to whoops you had to turn up your um, however you're watching me so So hopefully we'll get it, we'll get it right. Okay, that worked out nicely too, I like that. Perfect. Okay, now we're gonna, we're gonna work on our piece. So, I am going to close my paint. That's it for paint for now. Put this up here, close my paint. Now, you can, if you want, you can take off the, the um, washi at this stage, but you don't have to. I'm just going to, I don't like to leave my brushes sitting in water for any length of time because it can, it can uh, create, get too much water in the ferrule and, and cause things to split. So I'm going to 
set that there and then I'll wash it later. And I'm going to move that water because it's not the prettiest to look at. So what I see here, you could just leave it like this and then just cut it for um, to use in your uh, journal, like cut them into cards, which would be kind of cute, or use it as backgrounds and put something in the foreground. I'm using a Uniball Air Micro. They are meant to be waterproof. I say meant to be because sometimes you do get a bit of bleeding. Uh, and it's a great pen if you want to do some sort of, you know, ink work around your artwork. So I'm going to get brave and I'm just going to go and create a flower there. And then I'm going to go. For that looks to me like a flower from the back. And a little bit of flower floral work there. And maybe I'll wait and put my stems in later. See how I'm not following the line in and of itself? This looks to me like the back of a flower. Like so. This could be like a little blossom. I'm not worried about there being um, lots of, I'm making this look like it's like a, more like a hollyhock or something coming down there. <laughs> Liberties, I'm taking lots of liberties. Like that, it's a flower. So I'm, I'm using it kind of as a guideline, but it still to me kind of looks like a flower. You don't have to do them all, but you know, it's totally up to you. And then we got this green. Just going around some leaves. I don't know, do you, does that muddy it up for you? Because if, if you find that muddy or if you don't like that feel, then you probably would want to just go ahead and leave it as is. It's totally up to you. And you could add a little bit more color after if you want. I'm giving that kind of a very loose hollyhock sort of feel as well. So that's kind of what I'm attempting here. And then we can absolutely say that's part of a flower. This is definitely, for me, looks like a flower. Beautiful leaf. There's a flower there. And I don't want to do anything really tightly. I'm not going tightly following a, um, like a stem or whatnot. I'm, I'm just trying to do it loosely. Hold your pen maybe back farther and that might give you that sort of feel. A little center in there and they don't have to things don't have to line up they don't they don't even have to have a center 
and give the feel of the center. I mean, these are fantasy flowers. I like that one. That one's a bud. This feels very therapeutic, I have to say. So, still going. There's a lot of flowers in this garden. I like that the um, pinks blended in with the uh, greens a bit. So yeah, I'm just doing this loosely. It um, maybe we'll put a little hollyhock in there. So yeah, just finding flowers wherever we go. That's a nice one. And then this leaf coming off of here. So. That's kind of what we have. <laughs> I'm going to leave some of those without any lining around it. I don't know. What do you think? I mean, you can refine it some more. You could go in and put shading if you want it. You could put in a little bit of... I don't, I don't want to do that on this. I want to keep it really loose. So we'll just... I'm going to stop there. I take up my washi. And what I do is I set it on here because I can use it again. So there we go. We've got our little garden picture. You could leave it as a picture like that. I'm going to take this and just move it out of the way. What I'm inclined to do, oops, I'm just going to use my cutter and I would put it in here and I think it's just, it's, yeah, I'll probably get three tags out of it. So I'm just going to chop there. Three a little bit. Chop there. And chop there. And you could put a strip of paper down there if you want it. Whatever you felt good about. Put a little tag shape at the top. Easier said than done. <laughs> a little tag shape at the top. Just center it's a little bit different size, but I center the top of this on it, it should be fine. That one's a little narrower still, and just like that. They still feel a little bit damp, but I have to say, I'm really happy with those. I think those are a lot of fun. And then you could do some writing up the side here if you wanted. Um, you know, maybe a favorite quote. Uh, like, let's try. The earth laughs in flowers. I think that's uh, 
Waldo Emerson, but I'm going to check before I write the name Emerson there and just kind of put sign it like that. This one I'm just going to sign. I just think they're super cute in their own kind of funky way. Um, I'm going to sign this one over here. And I think I'll probably put a quote down there as well at some point. So that's it. That is our very first little art journal entry. You see how they worked like that. Guys, I hope you had fun. I hope you give it a try. They're super easy to do. Um, and I had a, a great time doing it. So give it a go. Let me know what you think. <laughs> I know it's a little bit out there, but it really comes together. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Cece, for the inspiration. Uh, and thank you, Michelle, as well, uh, from CC from Creation CC, Michelle from The Creative Cove. These are two very inspiring makers on YouTube that I highly recommend. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Bye.